Thank you for joining us on Fem Talk 89FM. I'm Fanny Mbosewanga, and today we are here in Nendi for our Western Divisional Consultation with our women leaders, young women, women representing those living with disabilities and members of the LGBT community, all the way from Rakiraki, Tavua, Ba, Nendi, Lotoka, and Nandrunga. And joining me in this segment is Just Nita Reddy, a young woman and also a student of the University of the South Pacific, representing motor community in Ba with more than 47 households, and Inisen Dawai, representing the Sikituru Women's Club in Nendi, representing more than 100 uh, households with uh, 400 plus uh, membership. Thank you ladies for taking time to talk to us. Today we'll be discussing human security and protection before, during, and after humanitarian emergency. For you, Jashmita, as a young woman and also as a student, throughout the consultation, for these past two days, a common issue we've been discussing is all about food security. So for you as a young woman and representing the motor community in Ba, what is the change you want to see to ensure that this protection need this human security priority is met? Thank you, Fane. Uh, the issue that we are facing nowadays is that uh, the prices of our basic food items such as flour, um, baby milk, rice, these uh, basic food items, the prices have increased just after the natural, I mean, linking it to the natural disasters we are facing now and uh, the release of the national budget, there is uh, the increase in basic food items, the prices, this, basically talking about the prices of the food items, it has seen to be increased and um, people are trying to rebuild their homes and uh, replanting issues so they are wasting a lot using a lot of money so in this case um, with the increase of the food prices they're facing more issues and the women particularly in this case are finding ways to provide food for their families so yes basically the price of food items is a concern yes increase in the food, basic food items not only uh before or after T.C. Winston. Moving on to you, Inis Dawai, you represent uh, not only the Sikituru Women's Club, but also with four villages of the Tiki Namakawa of Sikituru, consisting of four other villages, Korovuto, Ebusania, and uh, Moala. So what is the change for you as a women leader that you would like to see? That's a good question, Fanny. Uh, I would like, as a leader in my community, especially in Sikituru village, I need to see a lot of changes, especially from highlighting from the women. They need to see, uh, like the prices, like as just Nita has just said, they need to see that the prices of food items like flour, rice and sugar, those are the needs mm -hmm what we need every day. And they would like to see that those prices are down. But I think there's always a way out. Uh, we can always talk to our government leaders, whoever is concerned, especially with uh, our PIB people who's handling all these prices. These things can be done. And I am sure that uh, uh, if we see these people, I'm sure they can put the prices down. As I said, um, the women where the four villagers coming from, these are one issue that they need to see that the prices of food must go down. It's uh, also the same experience faced in Moto Village and also with the four villages under the Kinamaka of Sikiru. We've been addressing the high cost of basic food items, basically for flour, rice, one of the basic needs that we women usually use every day. Going back to you, Jashmita, uh, from not only from the community in Ba, uh, Moto community, in terms of the high cost of living that you've had, how can this be done from your own experience and also as, as a young woman? I believe that the government should hold in more public consultations with not only just the stakeholders, but, but also go out in the rural communities and uh, get to know of the problems they are facing if the items of, uh, if the food item prices are increased. So the government should be having more public consultations before uh, they announce the national budget. And I also believe that the agricultural ministry should go out into communities and educate the communities about alternative methods of growing vegetables to ensure that they are not only relying upon confectionery food or cane foods and fast food, but they are also um, being provided and helped with the seedlings and equipment and other ways of growing food. Mm. So I think those two things should be done. 
Thank you. More consultation and also more visitation to the rural communities, uh, as uh, Jasmita has just highlighted. For you, INISE, with the villages that you represent, do you think it is the same thing that Jasmita has highlighted that needs to be done? Yes, definitely. Um, like um, before, um, a lot of women, a lot of women do do planting, mm -hmm. like um, bele or bayangani. Uh, now, due to climate change, due to climate change, we we cannot do this anymore. We can do, but it takes a lot a lot of time in coming up. We have to wait. Uh, more months mm. for for these things to come up, as uh, as uh, just Anita has just said, uh, the prices of food are really. Uh, this is a thing that everyday wom uh, everyday woman is looking at, um, getting to get uh, good food on the table, and uh, this is a thing that takes their minds all the time, and and due to climate change, as I said, um, planting bele and bayangani um, before, uh, yes, uh, it takes, uh, we have a lot, but now, um, due to this flooding, as I said, uh, it takes a lot of time in um, coming up. Yes, uh, of course, it takes a lot of time compared to the past uh, before uh, we experienced this TC Winston. Uh, just meter, you've just highlighted about more consultation and more information to be coming out to the communities in terms of the issues that you've addressed earlier. So why do you think this needs to be done? With the increase in the number of NCDs, I think if people are doing their backyard gardening, then they will be having a healthy lifestyle. But this initiative can only be successful if there is assistance from the government. And uh, also, the traditional knowledge, it seemed to be uh, losing at some point or the other. So the women or the village elders at least should have a gathering at all times and discuss or educate the young people in the community on the ways of preserving food mm -hmm. because during the cyclone a lot of people faced issues of uh, not having enough food to provide for the families so if the food is preserved or preserving ways uh, such as drying and smoking then there will be at least enough food to supply for the family to some extent so the preservation of food and uh, because i mean just because of the increase in NCDs, there is poor lifestyle. And if you have a healthy lifestyle, then more lives will be saved. And then not only that, you will also be saving a lot of money if you are having um, a backyard garden. But uh, I believe the government has imposed fines that if you use your public water supply to water the gardens, you will be fined. So uh, this fine should be removed, I, th I believe, if the government is uh, wishing to start up initiatives with community regarding backyard gardening. Thank you, Jasmita. Uh, in ICF, you've heard that Jasmita has just highlighted in terms of preservation of food. I understand that that is something that our elderly usually do before or any, any, any disaster comes. So you, do you think this, uh, this needs to be done in order to, to have more food supply in future disasters with the villages that you represent? Yes, I, I think uh, that's a very good idea. Um, especially this is what used to, what our grandparents used to do before, uh, preserving food, uh, and that takes about a week or two and that can be used. Uh, but I think at the same time, we need to have like a skillful leader in the community, especially a woman who can voice, uh, a very strong voice to the women. So th this is what that, that can be done. If we have a skillful leader in a community, uh, I am sure she can have or a very strong communication to the rest of the women so this can be done. Mm -hmm. uh, because m many of the women out there uh, do not have the skill to go about these things. But if we have a strong leader in a community, uh, she can go about and uh, have a strong voice and pushing them forward. This is what should be done. Thank you, Jasmita and Inse. few of the important points and uh, that you've highlighted in terms of food security is for you, Jasmita, having more consultation and uh, programs to be organized at the community level that you represent and also educating the women in terms of preservation of food and also looking at the, the 
uh, they dispose of the uh, funds or the cost of basic food items in supermarkets where most of the communities and also most of the families are facing as one of the major issues. So moving on now, let's talk about the situation before and after Winston. For you and your community, Jashmita, you have about 47 households in the Moto community in Bar. Please tell us, what was the situation before Winston? Before Cyclone Winston, people were still able to uh, rely on the produce they grew from the farms mm. because most uh, family members, they are living close to the rivers. So they are using river water to grow plants or vegetables, cash crops. But those who are not closer to the rivers, the women usually after they are washing the clothes or the dishes, they try to collect water and uh, whatever vegetables they have grown, they use that same water to plant the vegetables so at least they are in some way or the other they are getting some vegetables so uh, they are much more having a sort of a healthy lifestyle practicing a healthy lifestyle and though and before the cyclone they um, some of the families um, none of the students were going to school without food parcels mm. but after the cyclone some of the students are seen to be going to school without roti parcels so uh, I'm relating this to climate change as well because after the cyclone, a lot of crops were damaged because those areas were flooded. So in terms of if addressed main uh, issue that if addressed earlier, it also links to access to water, that they do their bathing and their cooking and also they stock up water. Is it the same issue now uh, if also highlighted that, that after Winston, it's yes, it's the same issue issues uh, addressed in your community. So now it's after five months on. Do the women or the households in your community are still going through the same issues? To some extent, yes, they are going through the same issue. And as for the students who are going to school, who were going to school without OT parcels, uh, specific donors have come out in numbers and they are helping going out in schools and they are providing groceries to the teachers and mostly the school hires a cook so that they, they are able to get lunch for the students. And the students are not... Um, getting absent from school just because they have a reason that they do not have lunch and uh, as for the women and also the men in the community they are trying to do uh, replanting of crops as well even though there is hardship but they are going out of their ways to get back food on, uh, for their families in terms of going back to the land to replant just on that note do you think they have been assisted with any forms of seedlings or any assistance to help them going back to the farm after TC Winston, are they able to do farming? Uh, to some extent, yes, they have been provided with uh, seeds. They have been provided with seeds by the Ministry of Agriculture and also RPCPA, Raroi Cane Producers Association. Um, they have provided equipments to the farmers for growing crops, but uh, the land has, is not that fertile after the cyclone mm. because. Um, there is a loss of nutrients from the soil after the flooding and all. So they are still finding ways. The crops that they uh, were able to cultivate within three months, that's taking even longer, longer now. And I believe it will continue to take longer now. So after a few months of intercropping or at least another year, then I think they will be able to get settled. Thank you. We'll talk more on that, Jashmita, in terms of going back to the land to do replanting. In ECF for you, not only representing your own village, but under the four villages in the Tikinamaka of Sikituru, I understand that in the villages we have this land to go back to, to do farming. Before, before T.C. Winston, what was the situation like? Is it the same experience that Jashmita has highlighted? Yeah, what uh, Jashmita has highlighted, uh, before, right now, we are experiencing climate change, and uh, and due to that, we've been ex even now before Winston, we've been having this uh, dry weather, and it's been going on now for about a year or two, and uh, representing some uh, the women in the four villages, um, they do backyard uh, gardening, and uh, due to uh, the dry weather, we experienced flood too during Winston. Uh, what we used to do before, like backyard gardening and uh, farming, is not the same anymore. Mm. As I've mentioned before, it takes time, and time is something very important to us women. We cannot wait for time. So the thing is, we depend on, the, on some assistance. 
uh, concerned uh, by some people in high places, uh, I mean, from the government. So um, we did uh, find this thing uh, as women like uh, we like to put good food on the table every, I mean, every day. And we feel that uh, due to climate change, uh, this thing come about that we cannot do what we used to do before. Then we have to wait for longer periods like Bella have to come up or Mbaingan have to come up. And then we have to depend on our going back to the supermarket food. So on that, we need to have the cost of prices to put down, as Justnita just has highlighted in the beginning. Thank you. And, and it's also about the climate um, change that we've been experiencing for, for the past few months due to the time that we've addressed going back to the land to do replanting. Moving on, Justnita, so we're talking about what women want to see, what is the experience they had before, after, and now five months away from the T.C. Winston. For you as a young woman and uh, representing your own community, how are women leading the responses in their own communities to address these issues? Uh, the elders in the communities or the elderly women in the community or those women that are mostly living at homes, like they are not working outside, they are trying to get together with other women of the community and they are trying to make a community-based gardening initiatives. They are trying to set up their projects and they are trying to make use of the available resources, mostly for those cases. And they may be having a very tough time setting up that project and it can only be done if there is assistance provided. Thank you. Finally, for you, Inisir, representing your community and also a women leader, in terms of a women's leadership role, how can we support women or women's initiative to make the change we would like to see? That's a very good question, Fanny. Uh, as a leader, um, it's not, as I've mentioned, I think I've highlighted a little bit before, we need to have um, a strong leader who can motivate the women to move on. Um, I, would, I would like to see that the women um, will have to keep on doing what they used to do, even though it, it takes a long time for the, I mean, for the vegetables to come up. So, like what we, what family is doing now, um, we need to have, uh, for the women back in the village, to have more consultation so that they will know what to do and what to do next. And uh, I feel now, as as I'm a member of FamLink, uh, it gives, it makes me more powerful to know what to do that I can go back and tell the women this is what has to be done. Thank you for taking time to talk to us. You've been listening to Jashmita Reddy representing the Mboto community in Ba and Inisendawai representing the Sikituru Women's Club here in Nendi, who are participants of our Western Divisional Consultation here in Nendi. And I'm Fanny Mbosiwanga for Fem Talk 89FM.